Charles Purcell presents Hey, Boomer. Well, hello, Gen X. I didn't know you were at this party. I didn't see you when you came in. I've been here for hours. What are you talking about? Uh, I'm sorry. I guess I just didn't notice. Yeah, I guess you didn't. Nice party, huh? Nice party? Are you kidding? This party sucks. (laughs) What are you so unhappy about? Did I say I was unhappy? Well, you don't like the party. Hey, I'm fine. Don't worry about me. What do I care if the party sucks? I make my own party. I guess that's one way to look at it. That's the only way to look at it. I still don't know why you say the party sucks. I mean, look at this food. It's pretty nice spread, I'd say. Nice spread? It stinks. Nobody can make decent party food. That dip tastes like wallpaper paste. Wallpaper paste? What do you know about wallpaper paste? That's a little before your time, isn't it? Hey, I know about wallpaper paste. What do you think? I don't know things? Well, well, of course you know things. And I didn't need any fancy college. I do my own research. Oh, well, that's fine. Like this dip. I made it myself. You brought your own dip? Yeah, right here. And chips and cheese and little sausages. You brought your own food? Yeah. In Tupperware? You gotta learn to do for yourself at a party like this. Nobody's gonna do anything better than me. I know what I like and I know how to make it. And it's actually good unlike that crap you're eating. But you go ahead and enjoy yourself. What do I care? Well, well, all right then. Hey, Boomer. Well, hello there, Millennial. Hey, Millennial. Oh, hey, Gen X. I I didn't see you there. Did you just get here? What do you mean, did I just get here? I've been here longer than you. I saw you come in. Oh, sorry. I I guess I just didn't notice you. Nice party, huh? Yeah, I guess so. But what's with this music? Everybody loves the music. What are you talking about? Nobody likes this music. It's ancient. It's classic. Yeah, right, classic. Like classic movies. Like Hitchcock and Bogart and Betty Davis. Everybody loves classic movies. No, they don't. So what movies do you like? Platoon, Top Gun, Die Hard, Ferris Bueller, Goonies. Why, what movies do you like? I play video games. Tell me this, when you go to the grocery store or to the doctor's office, what kind of music do you hear? Classic, 60s, 70s. Even in bars and festivals, it's almost all cover bands. Doing what? The classics. Yeah, that doesn't mean it's good. Well, that's exactly what it means. It's got staying power. It's still around because it's the best. Not like the music that came after, if you can even call it music. You're crazy. The 80s rocked. You're right about the later stuff, though. I read this article about the scientific study they did that analyzed popular music and the newer stuff, like from the 2000s. It's really basic chord changes and tons of repetition and dumbed-down lyrics. They did a whole comprehensive data analysis. Hey, the numbers don't lie iHeart, Spotify, corporate media monopolies. That's what ruined music. Whatever, I don't really care anyway. I find the music I like online. There's plenty of good stuff to find if you just take a little bit of a deeper dive. You mean on the computer? On the web? Yeah, Boomer, on the web. No, no, that's way too much trouble. I've got my email and my Facebook. That's enough for me. That darn computer. You guys and your computers. They're no good. Gen X, are you a computer guy? Sure. As a matter of fact, I buy old computers from Goodwill and I fix them up in my garage. What? Do you sell them? Sometimes. But mostly, I just use them myself for this and that. Home entertainment system, home security system, stuff like that. Well, that's pretty impressive, Gen X. Millennial, do you know how to fix computers too? 
Sure, I guess. Mostly I build them from scratch. Build them? Yeah, I buy the parts and then build exactly what I want, you know, based on my needs. Nothing right out of the store is going to give you what you need. You, you got to build it. No, no, I've got my email and my Facebook. That's plenty. Yeah, okay, Boomer, you stick to your email and Facebook. Hey, where's all the food? I thought there was going to be food at this party. Well, sure, there's plenty of food. It's right to... It, uh, oh, oh, I, I'm sorry. You ate it all, didn't you? Well, well it was here, uh, and I was hungry. You ate all the food? Well, well, I'm sorry. I got here first, you know. I can't help it if they didn't make enough for everybody. Well, what am I supposed to do now? I'm hungry, too. Hey, kid, life isn't fair. Nobody's going to take care of you. Hey, a guy's got a right to expect to eat at a party. A right? You got a right? Here's what's right. What's that? Gen X brought his own food. <laughs> you brought your own food? Hey, if you don't do for yourself, nobody's going to do for you. Can I have some? What did I just say? <sighs> nobody's going to do for me. Now you're getting it. I tell you what, let's get everybody together and organize a kind of a rescue mission. What? Well, sure. We could find food in the kitchen and prepare it, and some of us could go make a run to the store for, for beer and snacks. We're out of beer, too? Afraid so. Oh, look, here comes Gen Z. He can help. Uh, hello there, Gen Z. Hi, Gen Z. Hi, Boomer. Hi, Millennial. Hello, Gen Z. Oh, hi, Gen X. I didn't see you there. You didn't see me? I'm, I'm standing right here. Jeez, I'm sorry. God, I just didn't see you. So, what do you say, fellas? We can do it. Let's get to work. Work? Yes, we're going to go in the kitchen and make some more food for the party. And a couple of us are going to make a beer run. This is a party. I didn't come here to work. So, what? You're afraid of a little work? This is a party. I work at work. At a party, I party. Well, sorry, kid. You don't make the rules here. Hey, man, I live by my own rules. See how far that gets you. This isn't fair. I didn't invite myself to this party, you know. I was invited. And I get here, and there's no food and no beer. Why are you so whiny? Man, this guy seems really depressed. He's down in the dumps, all right. It's anxiety. He's got anxiety. Hey, maybe he's neurodivergent. I've been reading about that like ADHD or something. Yeah, maybe. What's wrong, Gen Z? You guys, you guys are wrong. You're all wrong. You make this big party and invite people and expect everybody to come to your party and then you eat all the food and you drink all the beer before I even get here. Well, why'd you get here so late? 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 It's only 10 o'clock. What kind of party even starts at 10 o'clock, let alone runs out of food and beer at 10? You guys are insane. Big yikes. Clap back, bro. Why you being so choogy? No cap. Don't what do that. What the hell was Please that? Please don't do that. Well, I'm just trying to. I, I, I don't understand you. I don't understand this party at all. I hate you guys, and I hate this party. I should have just stayed home alone. Now that was a good movie. Classic. Everybody says I have to go out and make friends. Nobody understands. I'd rather just be alone. Everybody sucks. Oh, boo-hoo frickin' who. Life didn't give me a free ride, so I'm gonna cry about it. <laughs> Come on, Gen X, have a heart. The kid is obviously emotionally unstable. I'm emotionally unstable? I'm the only stable one here. You guys are socially unstable. You're economically unstable. You're morally unstable. What the hell kind of party are you throwing here? I'm going home. Huh. Well. <sighs> Whatever. Uh, I guess I'll go home too. Yeah, let's just go home. Yep. Time to blow this pop stand. Alpha. Where's Alpha? Have you seen Alpha? The kids are out in the backyard. Alpha, come on. We're going home. Aww. Come on, Dad. Mm. Gen X, your dad's been here with you the whole time? Yeah. Oh, I didn't hear a peep out of him. Hello, Silent. Mm. Well, well, gee, Silent, sorry we didn't get to talk. Y you were so quiet. I didn't even know you were here at the party. Mm. Let's go, Dad. Mm. All right, then. See you, Gen X.
Good night, millennial. See you, millennial. See you, boomer. Night, Gen X. Drive safe now. Okay, boomer. For when I need a reminder, here's a list I made for myself. It's a list of things I could do instead of scrolling on my phone or watching television. Have a conversation with someone. Hello. Read a book. Look at old family photos. Garden. Learn to garden. Take a walk. Ride a bike. Feed the ducks. Lie in the grass and look at clouds. Call my mother. Call my father. Dance. Exercise. Lift weights. Do yoga. Do a puzzle. Get all dressed up in my nicest clothes for no reason at all. Write a joke. <laughs> Write a song. Write a story. Write a novel. Call me Ishmael. Write someone a letter. Write my member of Congress. Mr. Speaker. Draw a picture. Paint a picture. Take a hot bath. Take a power nap. Meditate. Sit alone with my thoughts. Sit alone and stare into space. Go swimming. Go bird watching. Go fish. Learn to sew. Engage in safe sex. Climb a tree. Volunteer. Masturbate. Declutter my desk. Declutter my kitchen drawers. Declutter my closet. Declutter my garage. Pretend I'm a superhero. Pretend I'm a private eye and spy on my neighbors. What are you looking at? Design my dream house. Play cards. Play a board game. Play softball. Play with a child. Play my guitar. Learn to play guitar. Sing a song. Start a band. Protest something. Watch sidewalk ants build their little hills. Clean my house. Rearrange my furniture. Make a pillow fort. Memorize a poem. I think that I shall never see a poem lovely as a tree. Memorize an actor's monologue. To be. Or not to be. That is the question. Whether Put on a one-person play. I am my art, and my art is me, so what better way to understand and discover me than through a one-person show? Hug a tree. Hug my kids. Aww. Make a cartoon. Make out my will. Make a pie. Mm, pie. Make a podcast. Make a list of things I could do instead of scrolling on my phone or watching television.
All right, people, I'm sure you'd like to know why you've been summoned here today. To put it simply, you three are the last holdouts. It's just you three that can't seem to get with the program. Science, research, and academics. Everybody else is on board. Pop stars, politicians, Hollywood, they're all cooperating. They've all learned a lesson. And what is that lesson? It's all about good storytelling. You gotta tell a good story. This is your primary function. Good marketing. Well, I'm here to do a little market explaining today. I mean you, research. What good are all your findings if nobody is listening? Nobody believes in facts anymore anyway. What you're selling, they ain't buying. You gotta meet the consumer where they live. You, science. You told us yourself that the human brain operates almost entirely on emotion and is incapable of reason or logic. So truth is relative. My truth is not your truth. What is truth anyway? Truth is what people believe, and they believe a good story, if you tell it right. <laughs> and you, academics, your own studies prove that you can't change another person's mind about anything. People are going to believe what they want. They just dig in. So how are you going to reach them? How do you get their eyes and ears? 
their attention. Well, if you can't make them think, then you gotta make them feel. And how do you do that? You appeal to their emotions. Anger, sadness, hope, nostalgia, joy, surprise, disgust, shame. And how do you do that? You tell them a story. It doesn't have to be true. Truth is relative anyway. It just has to be captivating. It just has to be persuasive. The national press has learned this. It's not about news. It's not about journalism. It's about keeping your audience on their toes. Give them a good scare with the crime and the doom and the gloom, then leave them at the top of the hour with some feel-good sentimental pap about a little kid with a lemonade stand paying off all her classmates' lunch money debt. Politicians have learned this. It's not about governing. It's not about policy. It's about crafting a compelling narrative about the candidate that evokes a personal connection. The crazy uncle, the cool aunt, the nerdy friend, the drinking buddy. Pop stars have learned this. It's not about the music, man. It's about the sex, or it's about the rage, or whatever. And mostly, it's about creating and maintaining a carefully contrived persona that shares their story in an intimate relationship with the fans so they think that they're special. Hollywood has learned it. It's not about the story in the movie. It's about the story about the movie. It's about building a franchise. It's about creating a buzz. Just look at Barbenheimer. Before those movies even came out, they had everybody hooked. These weren't just movies, they were cultural phenomenon. That was the story, and everybody believed it. The people had to go see these movies for fear of missing out. They literally had no choice. Corporate brands learned this a long time ago. It's not about the low price or the high quality of the product or the fast, friendly service. It's not about the product or the service at all. It's all about brand loyalty, engineered through marketing. And good marketing is good storytelling. This is the world today. But you guys, science, research, academics, you're in another century. You're living in the Enlightenment, for God's sake. You're still in powdered wigs and knee socks. I hate to break it to you, but the rationalists lost the war a long time ago. Objective truth, best evidence, sound reasoning, the scientific method. If you want to stay relevant, if you want to get some eyeballs, if you want to get funding, if you want to stay in business, my friends, you got to get with the program, Sam. You have to entertain. It's all about good storytelling. You've got to create a compelling narrative. Everybody else gets it. I, and the rest of us, we're all out here trying to create reality and everything's going along great and the general public, they all buy into the stories until they don't know up from down anymore. And then you guys come along and foul everything up. I mean, you're screwing us, man. If you don't get right, we're gonna have to take you down. I mean, it's already started. I don't know if you noticed up there in your ivory tower, but the rest of us down here have been sabotaging you guys pretty good. Research, we've totally got people believing that a few hours on Google is research. They actually call it doing their own research. It's hilarious. Academics, the attacks on higher education and universities are through the roof. We got Mike Rowe heading up that department. You know, the dirty jobs guy? Ever heard of him? And science. You really want to keep fighting a war with us? We've got an entire major political party denying climate crisis. And COVID put the last nail in your coffin with the Joe Rogan Aaron Rodgers crowd and the yippee yoga suburban Karens. When you add in people that are just plain stupid for no reason, we've got practically a super majority. So, what do you say, you three? We're still willing to play nice. We want you on the team. We don't want to completely destroy you, unless we have to. We think you have a lot to offer. But seriously, you gotta play ball. You have to entertain. You gotta tell stories. You gotta create narrative. 
That's just the way it is. To paraphrase Ned Beatty, this is the natural order of things. The atomic, subatomic, and galactic structure of things today. And you are meddling with the primal forces of nature. song Hope by Carsey Blanton. This episode of Charles Purcell Presents is available right now wherever you find your podcasts or go to the website charlespurcell.com for the full archive and all the other series in the podcast family. Follow me on Facebook, write to me at charlespurcell at gmail. Thanks to our flagship terrestrial station, River West Radio, riverwestradio.com. Theme music composed and performed by Peter Donalds. From the New Arts and Media Studios in Milwaukee, I'm Charles Purcell.